But I know right from wrong. Mm -hmm. right. And I'm trying to live right. Some folks don't know right from wrong. Some folks flow with the culture. Mm -hmm. If the Bible says it's wrong, I don't care how many people are doing it, Sister Marbet, it's wrong. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's and if it's right, I don't care how many people say it's wrong. There's people out there that are now publicly cursing God, calling us fools. Y'all just some re religious zealots. Bible ain't, the Bible's just another book. And because, you know, you know, there's people in all type of movements in society. You live according to a book? Yes. You live according to people's opinions? I, do, I, I choose to live from a book that God wrote. That's right, Pastor. Come on. That God endorsed. Why? Because I don't trust people. When I say I don't trust people, I don't say that in a paranoid way. I don't trust people when it comes to my God. I got to go to the Word and see what the Word says. Yeah, I, 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 I don't even trust angels. Because the Bible says in the book of Galatians, if an angel come comes from heaven come on, preaching another gospel, curse that angel. Right. So if I can curse an angel, I can soon enough curse you. Right. Right. I ain't listening to nothing you say as it pertains to God. Why y'all listen to sinners tell you about God? Amen. Some of y'all crazy. Y'all listen to people who don't even know God, letting them tell you how to have a relationship with God. I know, right? Amen. I don't go to church and everything, but Amen. I know God. No, you don't. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta tell folk the truth. I, I don't go to church like you do and do everything, but I got my own relationship with God. Yeah. You got a relationship with a God, you just don't have a relationship with the God. Yeah. <laughs> my God. Come on. Come on. Let me shut up and get into the word. Sometimes I talk too much. Would y'all stand on your feet and pray with me? Amen. Amen. Well, come on, sir. I'm telling you right now, if you're comfortable in your sins, I'm about to make you uncomfortable. All right. make us uncomfortable. So this is a chance that while we have our eyes closed, you can make an exit. No, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna beat up on nobody this morning. I, I'd rather beat up on me than beat up on you. All right. And if I gotta beat up on somebody, it'll be beating up on me. All right. Don't nobody feel bad. All right. Don't nobody say I'm thrown off. Okay. Amen. I'm just gonna give you the word. Amen. That's right. Cause I'm trying to get right, boy. Ah, Papa John, I'm gonna be 55 at the end of the month. All right. You probably got shoes that old. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get it right. I'm trying to get it right. Before I close my eyes, I gotta get it right with God. Come on, somebody. Uh, Lord, I don't got to be rich. I just got to be right. Yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God, as we go into your word, Lord God, cover us in the name of Jesus. Protect us from our own imagination. And Lord God, as we seek you, Lord God, let it be you that we seek, not the opinions of men, not the opinions of culture, but the divine inspiration of God. And we give you the thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Let the people of God say amen. amen. In your Bibles. Your phone, your tablet, or if it's written in the tables of your heart, let us go to the book of 2 Samuel, the 12th chapter. And I'm going to start the 13th verse. Y'all can be seated. Amen. Y'all know sometimes I got to do some prep work. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to work this. 2 Samuel 12, 13. Um, I got to set you up first. Um, one of the most infamous. I know y'all watch Lifetime movies and people don't watch, I don't know if people still watch soap operas yes. and reality television. But there's a story in the Bible that trumps all of it. It's got sex, lies, and murder. As you know, that's what folks like these days. There's a saying in media, if it bleeds, it leads. But there's a story from a, a, a man that we treasure that did the most trifling, wicked thing a man could do. Mm -hmm. We know about David. Mm -hmm. David, the man of God. David, the shepherd. David, the king. David, the conqueror of the Philistines. Mm -hmm. But also David, the adulterer and murderer. Yeah. We all know the story, David. David's on his rooftop. Mm. When, and he should have been at war. He should have been on the battlefield, but he at home, on the roof. Looks down. There's a woman bathing. And even though David is anointed, he's a 100% heterosexual male. And he sees a woman bathing. And he looks. Mm, mm, mm. 
Mm. Mm. Mm. Mm. Mm. Mm. Y'all know what I'm talking about. If you ain't don't know what I'm talking about, you ain't never been in love. Mm. 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 I got any men here ever been in love? Hallelujah. You in love with a woman and you just like to see her walk away? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Y'all act like y'all ain't gonna be saved. Come on, baby, just walk. Just say something to me. Just walk away. I like to see you coming. I like to see you going. Mm, mm, mm. Everything you do is perfect. Mm, mm, mm. Your bath water is anointed. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. Somebody be like, how your lady doing? Oh, mm, mm, mm. How your man? Mm, don't ask me that. Mm. Come on, y'all like it. Come on, come on. So David... Looks at this woman. The look didn't hurt him. He told somebody, go get her. That hurt him. David gets this woman, lies with this woman. And like what's happened to people all over the country, she gets pregnant. And like other people, he tried to cover it up. He is the king of Israel. So to cover his tracks, let's put it on your husband. He fetches for her husband. Out of the battlefield and says, man, you're doing a good job. Go home and lay with your wife. Celebrate for a few days. He said, I can't. My soldiers out in the battlefield. How, what is it going to look like me going home when they out there fighting where you should be too? Uh -huh. right. So the man doesn't do what the king says. He goes back to the battle. He was faithful yes. to the king. That's right. So David sends a message. I want to send a message to the front line of the battle. And Uriah dies. And he thinks his tracks are covered. Mm. But my God, he's still looking at Bathsheba. Mm. And everybody in his house sees it. That's right. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all think y'all slick. But the people that know you know what you're doing. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> they know when your car is parked at the wrong house too long. Uh -oh. Y'all yeah. know what I'm talking about. <laughs> they know when you're preoccupied. They know when somebody done put a glow on your face. Who are you talking to? You all glowing and shining and everything? <laughs> so David and Bathsheba for a whole year, she get pregnant. He act like he ain't had nothing to do with it. And then somebody who loves him, yeah. who respects him, mm -hmm. who honors him as king, comes and confronts him. Right. Since when did confrontation be hate? Since when did coming to someone in love be a hateful action? Right, right. Some folks came to us because they loved us and then we shunned them. Who are you to judge me? You better mind your own business and stay out of mind. They love you, fool. Right, right. <laughs> I can imagine Nathan came to him with tears in his eyes. Yeah. He said, let me get myself straight. I got to talk to the king. Mm. He said there was a man, a rich man and a poor man. Rich man had flocks and herds and poor man just had one little lamb and he loved it like his own child. See, so understand in those days when people sacrificed a lamb, you had to bring the lamb into your house and treat it like your own child. He loved the lamb. So the rich man didn't want to mess with his flock and he takes the, old, the poor man's lamb and slaughters it and gives it to a traveler. David was enraged. Who is this man? He deserves to die. Mm -hmm. Nathan holds back the emotion and said, All right. you're the man. Mm -hmm. You took Uriah's wife, mm -hmm. yeah. brought her into your house, That's right. and judgment is coming to your house. Mm -hmm. The Bible, Nathan tells him, somebody going to take, your enemy's going to take your wife. And there's going to be a sword in your house. See, I'm going to tell somebody, you get away with nothing. Nothing. Right. nothing, nothing. nothing. Mm. And the judgment on David was so cold, the enemy that took his wife was his son, Absalom. Mm. That's right. Slept with his father's wife. Yeah. Now, you can, somebody, oh my God, y'all don't have a story that you took your daddy's wife. Mm. And then he had one of his sons raped his daughter. Sure did. Yeah. And all hell broke out loose in David's house. Oh, yeah. But I want to pick it up because once David is confronted 
When he told him, he said, you are the man. And then David said to Nathan, I have sinned. Mm -hmm. Why is it so hard, mm -hmm. Sister Lily, for people to admit they sinned? All right. Why is it so hard for us to just sometimes say, I did it? Right. Why is it so hard for people to own their stuff? You did it. Just say, I did it. And we can move on. That's right. It's hard for me to forgive you and you can't comprehend what you did. Right. Come on, Pastor. Right Everybody's there. apology is not sincere. I can give you a whole list of insincere apologies. If I hurt you, I'm sorry. Fool, you know you hurt me. We mean if. If I need to say sorry, I will. That ain't sincere. I wish I would pray, God, if I offended you, I'm sorry. Lord, I know I offended you. I know I did wrong. That's right. And so, but something happens after David confesses he did it. Oh God. See, understand what David did, he committed two sins that were worthy of death, adultery and murder. Mm -hmm. Even though he didn't physically put his hand but he did it. on Uriah, right. he put the hit out on him. Yeah, All right, right. come on, same thing. Come on. And both of those actions were worthy of death. Right. That's but right. my God, Nathan says to him, the Lord has put away your sin and you shall not die. All right. I want y'all to know something. Whatever you've done, whatever sin you've committed, somebody paid the price for that sin and you will not die. Oh, I tell somebody, somebody in this room got to come back. Yeah, you did it. You're guilty as charged, but you didn't, somebody didn't tell you that God is merciful. God is kind. God is long-suffering, and God will forgive. But hold your brakes for a minute. Just because God forgives you don't mean you off the hook. Because sin comes with a cost, and sin comes with consequences. A lot of folk lifting up their hands, mother, because they're glad they're forgiven. But some of y'all, your sin will cost you more than you're willing to pay. My God. Didn't get away. You sleep with a man's wife, he might forgive you. That don't mean he ain't going to kill you. And the court just might let him go. Crime of passion. But getting back to, he told David, God put away your sin and you won't die. But what you did yielded a consequence. Right. Because he said, you cause the enemies of God to blaspheme God. Right. Let me tell you something. God ain't ruining his reputation. We are. Mm -hmm. In the eyes of the world, people don't have a problem with God. They got a problem with us. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. And sometimes God has to do something so people know that he's a just and he's a fair God. Right. God just don't punish See, y'all got a problem because y'all want to whoop everybody else's kids while your kids going crazy. Right. You want to check everybody else's kids and your kids have lost their mind. God said, I will check home first. Y'all waiting for sinners to get theirs and the Bible says judgment will start at the house of God. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the sinner appear? God will deal with his children first. Right. And so God says, David, you gave an occasion for the enemies of God to laugh at God. My God. See, we got a problem in the church right now. From the mega churches to the storefront. When people fall, they start doing damage control. Oh, Y'all yeah. know what damage control is? It's in Washington. It's in Hollywood. That's when you mess up, you hire a team of people to smooth it out. Yeah. Uh-huh. So now even the church, the man of God sins, we got to smooth it out. When all he has to do is repent. Mm -hmm. My God. Let me tell you something. Don't ask for damage control and don't be a part of somebody's damage control. Yeah, come on, sir. Good word. Good word. Because if you cover the sin, you did it. That's right. right. Come on. That's come right. on, sir. Come on. You cover the sin, you did it. That's right. 
All you got to do is curse somebody. Just confront, confess, talk to God. He'll forgive you. Come on, Pastor. And so, the Bible says that Nathan left David's house. And as Bathsheba was pregnant, I'm getting to my text. I'm, I'm lining this up. I ain't going to be long. And, and, and the Bible says, and the child was sick. And David wept. And he fasted. He wept and he cried. And the elders of the church tried to, you know, you know, when you know when you're in mourning and folks trying to cheer you up? Yeah. Wrong. If I'm in mourning, let me mourn. Sometimes when you do evil, just let people sit in it for a while. Yes, yes, yes. I don't know about you, but I ain't gonna get it till I have to sit in it. All right. I ain't going to get it till I got to be held accountable for it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. My dad used to say, sit here and think about what you did. That's right. That's right. That's right. That wasn't just parenting. That was prophetic. Right. Sometimes don't try to restore people too quickly. Yeah. Sit there and think about it. That's it. Come on, sit that's there it. and ponder. If you do me wrong and you can't talk about what you did, then sit in it for a while. Yeah. Don't mean I ain't going to forgive you. That's right. That's why I tell people sometimes be slow to repent uh -huh. if you don't know why you repented. Come on, Pastor. Uh -huh. right. Come on. Good word. Don't just throw out there, Lord, I'm sorry, and you ain't really sorry. Mm -hmm. Right. So the Bible said that the child was sick, and the elders got word that the child died. Mm -hmm. And David heard them whispering. And he said, Is the child dead? And they said, Yes, the child is dead. Mm -hmm. This is where I want to get to the flashpoint. When you sin, there's a process of getting it right with God. It's not an action. It's a process. Yes, God forgives immediately, but you need a healing process. Even though God told, Nathan told David, your sin is removed, David still had to go through the process. What is the process? The process is first, he had to acknowledge. That's right, amen. You cannot be forgiven until you acknowledge. That's right, Pastor. In the court of law, and some of y'all been arrested, did some time. That's all right. The judge might, or the prosecutor might offer you a plea. Room got real quiet, didn't it? Yeah. Act like you ain't never been to court before. Act like you ain't never met with the DA before. But they will offer you a plea. But the condition of the plea is you have to allocute, which is a fancy word you got to tell on yourself. On November 17th, 1923, I walked into the 7-Eleven and I robbed it. I had no accomplice, completely my responsibility. And after you allocute, the judge gives you a sentence. But they will tell you, if you leave anything out, then the deal is null and void. You can't change it. You got one chance to tell the truth. I'm trying to help somebody this morning. Stop telling bits and pieces of truth and just tell the whole story. Yeah. The Bible said that David confessed his sins. Folk don't confess. They tell the parts that are pretty and a little bit ugly, but they don't tell the whole truth. We start blaming folks. I wouldn't have did it if they wouldn't have did this. I did wrong because my mama raised me like this. I did this because of my past. I was traumatized. Like God ain't trying to hear none of that. You did it and you wanted to do it. I'm trying to help somebody this morning. David confessed, which means he told the whole story. Nobody wakes up in fornication. Mm. Nobody wakes up in addiction. Nobody wakes up a liar. It's a process. What did James say? Every man is tempted when he is drawn away by his own lust and enticed. And when lust is conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Some people are still walking around because sin ain't done with you yet. Uh -huh. Come on, come on, sir. People walking around, slipping and sliding, people in hiding, don't know. You think you're getting away. You think you're a smooth operator. It just ain't got finished yet. Yeah. Yeah. David, in his sin, his son got sick. His son died. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of sin is death. Yeah. It just wasn't David's death. Right. Sometimes when God forgives you, he starts killing some stuff around you that don't belong. That's why you lost your friend. You lost your man. You lost your women. Because once God forgives you, he got to cut the dead stuff from around you. Mm -hmm. 
the child was the evidence mm. of his sin. Mm -hmm. Is the child innocent? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But sometimes innocent people yes, go down with the guilty. Yes, They're called casualties. Mm -hmm. yes. You sin and your family paid for it. Mm -hmm. You sin and your mate paid for it. Mm -hmm. You sin and your people that love you paid for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We got a paradox of here of one of the most righteous men mentioned in scripture. And he's in the middle of a mess. Mm, come on, Pastor. God forgave him. And when I talk to y'all about the process, in verse 13, he acknowledges mm -hmm. that he did it. Mm -hmm. And he begins to pray and plead with God because prayer is also part of the process. After God forgives you, you still got to talk to God. Yes. Yeah. Don't ask me for forgiveness, then walk away. You still owe me a conversation. Yeah. Y'all ain't gonna get it. I'm trying to be practical this morning. Y'all want folks to forgive you, but you don't want the conversation that comes with come the on, forgiveness. Come on, yes, sir. Yeah. Come on, sir. Let's just put it all in the past. No, we gotta leave it in the present for a minute, deal with it so we can all digest it, and then we can get through it. You gotta talk to God. Let me just tell you something. I experienced my greatest breakthroughs in prayer when I told God the details. Because I know y'all do that generic prayer. Lord, forgive me of all my sins and all my trespasses. Lord, cleanse me from all the God said, I don't know what you're talking about. Can you explain yourself and give me the details? Because the details reveal your heart. Why does God want the details? Not because he doesn't know them. Because you need to hear them. How did you get to the place you got in? When Adam sinned, he said, Adam, where are you? He wasn't asking him for location. He was asking him for the condition of his life. Yes. Mm. So the, mo the road to recovery is acknowledgement, prayer. In prayer, you experience sorrow. And the Bible says that godly sorrow works repentance. Yes. You cannot repent for what you're not sorry for. Right. You're still glad you hit me. How can you be, how can you repent? And I'm glad I did it. But I'm sorry, I guess. <coughs> That's no repentance. Because it's sorrow. Uh, 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 if I love you and I offend you, I owe you a conversation. Uh -huh. Even though I say, Pastor, it's okay. No, it's not okay. I got to talk. I said something stupid I shouldn't have said. And, and you're so special to me and I love you so much. I don't know what was wrong with me, but forgive me. Let me tell you something. That helps somebody. Even though you might be a wonderful person and you say, it's okay, I'll let it go. No, I owe you that conversation. Yeah. I'm going somewhere. So understand that as David, the child, died, David does something remarkable. David, I, I want you to see David prostrated before God mm -hmm. in tears, weeping and interceding for this child. But when they say the child is dead, David gets up, get up. Yeah. puts on his clothes. Yeah. Washes his face, washes up, anoints himself, and goes into the house of God and begins to worship. Yeah. Now, this is crazy to his yeah. servant. Yeah. He said, while the child was sick, you was up there wallowing and praying and pleading. But the child died and you came to life. Mm. Right. Let me tell you what's happened when God forgives you. When God forgives you and you go through the, the discipline of God and you repay you, God sends a release to say it is over. And I want somebody to know today, yeah, you did it. You're guilty as charged. But when God gets finished with you and you go through the process, you can go on because it's over. I See, I'm one of those people that didn't know when it was over. If I do you wrong, I keep telling you sorry every day. But once the debt has been paid by Jesus, once the debt has been paid by his grace and mercy, it's over. The devil's still trying to accuse some of y'all today. You need to look in the face of the enemy and say, I'm going back to worship because it's over. I sinned, I broke God's heart, but he put me back together and it's over. Is anybody here glad that it's over? The nightmare is over. Yeah, you did it. Come on. Some of us were backsliders and you came back to God. Forget about what I did in my past because God said it's over. Oh. David can worship because it's over. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Yes. You know, Lord, thank you. Sister Mary, I did some stuff in my life. And I thought it was godly to wallow in it. Mm -hmm. Pity. 
walk around church and just be clear. Oh, no. oh Lord, I'm so sorry. Every time you go, oh, Lord, I'm so sorry. And God's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. If God forgives you, he also removes it. If he removes your sin, he also does something that is way beyond him. He takes it out of his own memory. Yes. When God forgives you, he doesn't accept your apology. He removes the sin as far as the east is from the west. So he has removed your sins and transgressions from you. You're holy just like the day you was born. Come on. David got up. Because it was over. Yes. I don't know who this is for this morning, but you got to make it over and get so you can get back to your life and get back to the promises of God. Some of you fired yourself and God didn't fire you. You up there and sat yourself down and God didn't sit you down. Yeah, He might have sat you down for a season, but at some point you got to get up. Let me tell you where the church has failed. We know how to discipline. We don't know how to restore. We know how to expose, but we don't know how to restore it. You know how to break it, but you don't know how to put it back together. Let me just tell you something. Demolition is a lot easier than renovation. It's easy to tear something up. It's easy to tear. Sometimes it's fun. You might be doing redoing your kitchen, and I'm gonna do my own demolition. You got a sledgehammer, and you just go to town. It's kind of fun, but you don't have the skill to do the renovation. There's many in the church they like demolition. I'm going to tear you down. I'm going to expose you because I'm a man of God and I stand for truth and righteousness, and I'm gonna tell the truth no matter who it is. You're a demolitionist, but you don't know how to restore it. You know how to tell other folk business, but you don't know how to tell yours. You know how to chastise other people's kids, but you don't know how to discipline yourself. Yes, yes. Come on, sir. Sometimes you gotta walk with people and tell them it's over. Yeah, that's it. That's it. You're forgiven. Yeah. Go back to the ministry. Go back home. Let your life. It's it's over. But most of us don't know when it's over. There's some of y'all in here. We've had some intimate conversations. We done did some mess. But ain't it something when it's over? Oh, I, I, I'm happy because I got to get to the point where I got to get because that's where I'm going to be. When it was over. The climax of the story is what blessed. When David cleaned himself up and went to the house of worship and he fixed it with God in the house of worship, the Bible said he went home. And he did something that people in sorrow and grief don't do. He hooked up with his wife. That's not how usually people deal with their grief. But David goes home. And look at the name change. I, I want y'all to notice something. Go, uh, go, go back up to the text. Go to the text where we were. In verse... Uh, in verse 15. The Bible said, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bore to David. Stop right there. Who, 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 who did David have a baby with? No, Uriah's wife. Let's go back down. Let's go back down to verse 24. Then David confronted Bathsheba, his wife. God, when it's over, he changes the story and changes the narrative. She went from being Uriah's wife to God honored as David's wife. That means when it's over, God will change your name. When it's over, God changes the story. When it's over, God changes your reputation. When it's over, you're reestablished. When it's over, you are brought back to new condition. That's why it's got to be over. David was the one in agony, and the Bible said David went home and comforted Bathsheba, his wife, and went and lay with her. So she bore a son. That's kind of crazy because we think God in his judgment curses kids. Let me help somebody out this morning. Oh, God. Moment of transparency. Sometimes people have had babies, but they didn't do it God's way. That's right. So something inside of my nature thinks God's going to take vengeance on me mm -hmm. to the child. Mm -hmm. 
Like God gonna curse the baby for something you and the stupid parent, other parent did. Come on, that's our mindset. Because even some of folks in the church make people believe that. Like we got cursed kids and they... You had a child born out of wedlock. Hallelujah. And God is going to strike that child with serious vengeance. And people believe mess like that. But the Bible said, you done took a... Come on. David's mess was wrong. He took another man's wife. But when God forgave him, he had to pay for it. But he wasn't going to live in it forever. That doesn't mean that God said, okay, now it's a good thing. God says, what you have, I'm going to bless what you have. And Bathsheba got pregnant. And the beautiful thing is, the Bible says she bore a son. And God loved him. And God loved him. That was Solomon. And God loved him. The child that came from an adulterous affair. The child that came from sin. But the Bible said, and God loved him. I don't care what you did wrong. I don't care how you blew it. God will put you back together and say, I still love you. Right. And what comes out of you, I'm going to love it too. Yes. Guilt, shame, and condemnation are not tools that God uses. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. It's his love, it's his grace, and his mercy that he uses to draw us back to himself. That's right. And the Bible said that God loved him. I don't know why it's making me emotional, but just say all the mess. Can you imagine all the gossip that David yeah. was experiencing? Yeah. People were whispering in his own house. But the Bible said, and God loves Saul. Yeah. Yeah. Out of the womb, he loved him. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm trying to find a parallel story in the Bible of somebody else that was loved out of the womb by God. But God said, and God loves Solomon. Because yeah, right. through him, I'm going to bless him. That's it. In the name of Jesus. One of the Sundays I want to turn off the camera. I know mm. that story. Yep. Yep. No, when I say I know that story, I know that story. I lived that story. Yeah. Then that story is alive. Yeah. And that story is true. Yes. Yes. Because yes. God will love you again. Yes. Thank you, Lord. All right. Thank you, Jesus. My ministry is supposed to be over. That's all right. I was supposed to be flushed down the church toilet. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but God loves me. Yeah. All right now. All right and now. they met because God loves me. Right. They talked about me because God right. loves me. They went against me because God loves me. I'm so glad that God loves me. Right. And that which came from me. God still loves her. That which came from me, God still blesses. God still loves me. But I couldn't receive it until I admitted it was over. You ain't going to make me live in my past. I don't care who you are. You ain't going to make me live there. I don't care what you know. Let me just say something. The internet's open. You can find out a lot of stuff by me asking me. I don't care what you know. It's over. It's over. It's over. Some years ago, I went on the apology tour. I don't know if y'all was familiar with the I don't know if I ever told you about my apology tour. Everybody I've messed over in my life, I called. Because, you know, some of us, Baba Joe was ranked sinners. I done messed some people up. Oh, y'all know what I'm talking about. Yes, we can go. I done told some people I loved them and got close to them and just walked out of their life like it wasn't nothing. Yeah. Hurt. I don't care you hurt. I ain't mean to hurt you and everything. But I had to call people and say, I'm sorry. I know that's right, Pastor. I did you wrong. All right, all right. <laughs> well, it ain't no big deal. It's a big deal to me. <laughs> and then that made it over for me because I had to acknowledge. Some of y'all need to go on the tour. I know that's right. Y'all done messed up over some folk. You messed over Bobby back in 1972 and broke his heart and married his friend. You need to go back. And, uh, 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 I'm sorry. But I come to tell somebody, whatever was done after I talked to God, it's over. It's over. You can't harm me with information. I don't care if I run for office, which I'm not. 
Whatever you know about me, you just know. And you ain't got to tell on me. Ask me, I'll tell on myself. I don't know why people think they got something on you because they know stuff about you. Hey, tell it. We'll tell it together. We'll tell it in a song. When you disarm people with truth, because that's what confession does. Sister yes, Debbie, when I did my sin, uh-huh. Pastor told me, just tell him. I know that's right, sir. Don't blame him, on, just tell him. Tell it, that's right. Ain't that right, Papa Joe? Just tell him. Because once you tell and confess, you disarm the enemy because you take the rocks out of their hand. Don't try to throw rocks at you because of what they know about you. When you tell on yourself, you slap the rocks out of your I, I ain't giving you nothing to tell. If y'all don't understand that, understand when you was growing up. Your older brother, your older sister, your little sister would hope, ooh, I'm going to tell daddy you broke the lamp. Ooh, I'm going to tell. And then you say, daddy, I already know. I told you. So you ain't got nothing on me no more. Yeah, that's right, sir. Disarm the enemy with yeah, confession. Right. That's right. Disarm the enemy with that's repentance. Right. Because oh, I'm going to share something with you and I promise I'm, I'm going to I'm I'm close this out. I want us to go to Psalms 32 and 1. All right. This is still David talking, talking about his mess. All right. mm, mm, mm. Go faster, go. Psalms 32 and 1. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man on whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no God. Amen. But when I kept silence, my bones waxed over. Let me tell you something. Your quietness don't give you peace. You keeping it quiet ain't going to bring peace. He said my silence infected my bones through my roaring all day long. What was his roaring? His conscience. That's it. Oh, you remember going through that scare hoping you ain't going to be found out? Mm-hmm. Going through that scare because you're roaring on the inside. And he said, for day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. Let me inform you of how you know you have a relationship with God. Because you feel it when you did it. God don't give you no rest. God don't give you no peace. If I did you wrong, I ain't going to sleep till I apologize, till I get it right with you. That's how you know. And sometimes you have to thank God when you feel that conviction of the Holy Spirit and let you know God's still talking to you. That's right. Amen. David said, my moisture is turned into the drought of summer. So what do I do about it? I acknowledge my sin unto thee. That's right. And my iniquity have I not hid. Tell the truth. Not on everybody else, on you. And he said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. David recovered because he acknowledged and confessed. This morning, I need people to get set free. Get set free from the past. Some of you, it ain't the now, it's the past that still got a hold on you. Is information mm-hmm. on you mm-hmm. that you are holding against yourself. And we as the body of Christ, we need to be more like God and stop reminding people of who they were. That's right. Amen. That's why some people don't even like their nicknames. Because your nickname was a part of your past. Yeah. Yeah. Your nickname was a part of your former life. Right. Call me by my name. <laughs> What's up, Slick? I used to be Slick. I don't want that name no more. I know, that's right. What up, player? I ain't playing no more. I just want to be a man of God. I know that's right. That's my boy, my pimp, pimpin'. What's happening? No, that ain't me no more. Just want to be holy before God. I know that's right. So, people of God, if I had to put a message, a title on this message, it would have been He's going to bless you anyway. David should have been the most cursed man in the Bible for what he did in the natural. You can't think of many worse things you could do as a human to another human than what David did. But it lets you know that God's power is greater than our sin. (laughs) And that you can come to God and he will receive you. The thing we make the mistake is we feel like we have to hide from God when we sin. 
instead of just going to the presence of God and telling him what's going on. Why is this important? Because many people have walked away from God because of a mistake. Maybe it was a mistake. Maybe you did it on purpose. Don't matter. <clears throat> That's why we lost a generation of young people. Because some of them made mistakes. Had a baby out of wedlock. Went through a bad relationship. Ran away from home. Got hooked on drugs. And we just say, well, we want them to sit in it. No. God don't make them sit in it. Not unnecessarily. God disciplines us, but discipline is different than punishment. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all parents, y'all grew up just giving whoopings and you was whooping a child. You didn't even know why you was doing it. You was just mad, had a bad day at work and just started whooping everybody. Some of y'all grew up like that with people. That's not discipline. Dis the difference between punishment, never say you're punishing your child. I'm correcting. I'm trying to remove one behavior and replace it with another. That's what God does. It's called the chastening of the Lord. God chastens you. Doesn't mean he's mad at you. I just got to correct this behavior. Because you know at the end of David's story, what was spoken over David? And David sinned no more. That's right. Amen. That should be the result of your correction. And David sinned no more. It happened once. But by the grace of God, it ain't going to happen again. One time, first time you did it, it's a mistake. Second time you did it, you did it on purpose. Third time you did it, it's a habit. But if you turn to God, he will bless you. Solomon became the wealthiest and wisest man that ever lived. And he was born out of a jacked up situation. Solomon wasn't the only one that came from jacked up genes. There was another man that came from jacked up genes. And we call him Lord uh -huh. and Savior uh -huh. and God. Uh -huh. Jesus came from a funky background. Yes, come on, sir. Come on, sir. If you read the genealogy of Jesus, yeah. there's a prostitute yeah. mentioned yeah. Yeah. in the lineage of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Rahab yeah. yes, yes. is Jesus' great, 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 great grandmama. Yeah. 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 Jesus had pagans, uh -huh. adulterers. Oh, Jesus, thou son of David. David said, God said, just because you sin, I'm not going to erase your name. That's right. That's right. God could have blotted out his name from the book. But Jesus is associated and sits on the throne of David, the adulterer and murderer. That's right. Yeah, that's and if Jesus can appear out of the ashes of his upbringing, why can't you? All right. Good word, Pastor. Good word. Why can't you? Everybody here didn't come from the Brady's. <laughs>